everybody. How are you? Hope you're having a great afternoon. Look who's uh, sleeping in the window. Yep, Queen Booger. She's taking her afternoon nap. So while she's napping, I thought that I would take some time and react to some of Chantal's live that she did last night. And why do I say some of it? Well, because it will be absolutely impossible to react to every single minute of it due to the fact the live itself went on for six hours. That's right. Six hours. I don't have that kind of time. I know you guys don't have that kind of time. And to be frank and honest with y'all, she's not that interesting for six hours. You know, if you had to take out all the boring moments in the live and just condense it down to just stuff that's worthy to talk about, it'd be far shorter. So that is why I'm going to be skipping ahead a lot in her live and just try to condense it down as much as I can. And once I feel like we've covered enough, I'll just leave the rest alone because, you know, who cares? She'll do another live. She'll do another video. It's not that big of a deal. So, yeah. What was going on in the six-hour live? Well, different things of note, different things of interest. Uh, one thing of note, Chantal was being especially gross. And I mean, really, really, really gross. <laughs> She kept passing gas loudly, repeatedly in the live. Uh, she was just doing all kinds of different things. She just, just straight up nasty, putting a toothpick in her mouth and smelling it. Uh, she was intoxicated. She was under the influence of something. Uh, she left her apartment, uh, apartment, excuse me. She left her motel to go downstairs to meet up with somebody for some reason, which is curious because there are dispensaries around her motel. Why not just walk to one of them? Why meet up with somebody? Why get something from somebody if you can go to a dispensary and get it your dog on self? So there were different things that were odd and different things of note in the live. Another thing that happened in the live. So... This one I am going to talk about. Yes, I am. So let's talk about Natter once again. And I know what y'all are going to say. You don't like Natter? Guess what? I don't like him either. I really, really don't. Not exactly my favorite person in the world. Although it's Chantal's favorite person. It has to be. Because she refuses to stop talking about Natter. Natter keeps coming into her chat under a different name, uh, Dark Desert Prince or something like that. And for her part, she keeps going into his chat. There's evidence on Twitter of her going onto his channel and going into his chat, although it could be a troll. Got to err on the side of caution there. That could be a troll, although I don't think so. I think she's just eager to have Natter around to get the drama started. She is addicted to drama and Natter gave her lots of it. But yeah, she talking about Natter in Thailand again. Uh, Natter, for his part on his channel, he's talking about Chantal again. They're kind of sort of going back and forth, although not really. So there's like a weird dynamic there. And I'm not sure she's doing it. Because she wants to make Salah jealous or angry. Or she's putting out the silent message to Salah. Look, see this guy over here? He's detestable. But I could go home to Canada and get things started with him. And let you go and make twice as much money. So you better be a good, uh, be a good boy and do what I tell you. You know, like I don't know if she's talking to Natter for that purpose. I don't know if she's doing that triangle thing where she's trying to pit both men against each other and make them fight. But she's talking to Natter. One million percent she's talking to Natter. And she's not being very discreet about it. This person who claimed to be a DV victim 
talking to the person that she alleges hurt her. So before we get into the Twitter stuff, I would like to add some further thoughts. Like as far as Chantal's energy, I keep picking something up. You heard that expression, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Well, I don't think Chantal is robbing anybody to pay someone else. But what I do think is that she's borrowing money from Peter to pay Paul. I feel like money is changing hands back and forth. Like she's giving money to people and money people are giving money to her. I think perhaps uh, with her vacation, she's getting very, very low on money. It would make sense. All the money that she's spending on food. Uh, this is the part of the vacation where she's like, oops, I think I spent too much. So going to different people to get money. I don't know if that's Pete's. I don't know if that might be her family. I don't know if that's her Beezers. But I keep feeling this energy of uh, money transferring hands, uh, the funds being just shifted back and forth. I think that's where she is right now. And that's what's going on, allegedly. So just want to put my thoughts out there. The Chantal is at that point where she might be low on money and borrowing money from people so she can stay in Thailand, uh, maybe borrowing money from certain people to give to other people to do things for her. I don't know. So let's get into all the Twitter stuff. All right. And there's quite a bit to go over. All right. So those of you that are on Twitter and would you like to follow me on Twitter? There's my handle. Wow. Girl, Sarah. Let's start here with something from Truth Seekers and Pay attention, y'all. Watch this. Chantal was in Natter's chat saying she owns him. Isn't that haram to say she owns another man while being married? So this is Natter's chat that he had recently. Now, that profile picture, that's different than Chantal's. But that could also be one of her sock accounts. This person is saying, fight me, blank. I own you. It might be a troll. It might be. But let's just say for argument's sake that it is a troll. That it isn't really her. There's all kinds of evidence that she is watching Natter. Like the things she talks about in her chat. She's watching Natter. She's over in Thailand. She's bored. She's got nothing else to do. Natter was the one she was the most possessive and obsessive over. She actually said, I'm addicted to this man. That's the one she really wants. That's the one she really wants to be with. Salah was just the one that she settled for because she couldn't have Natter. You know, Didi has Natter. So she had to settle for somebody else. And she did. Two years of misery for nothing. She did it to herself. But uh, even if she wasn't in the chat this day, she's still watching him. She's still obsessing over him. She's still talking about him. And if you'd like my opinion on that, I think the two of them are talking on the phone. And she is feeling him enough that she wants to help him get views back on his channel by putting his name in her mouth, which means he can put her name in his mouth and they can bounce views off each other. So I think she's talking about him more to try to help him out to make money. All right, moving on. Nature is amazing. I've never seen a chocolate husky before, and I'm in love. What a beautiful boy. What a beautiful boy. <laughs> what? You don't like the brush? What? <laughs> and he's got beautiful ice blue eyes, too. Gorgeous. Okay, Julie says, why would you use a toothpick and then smell it? She's just gross and feral. Yeah, that moment. Where she used the toothpick and then she smelled the toothpick. I, you know, everybody's got different fetishes in the world. 
kinks and whatnot. I think honestly, Chantal has fetishes and kinks and interests revolving around bodily functions, bad smells, disgusting things. I mean, if it's normally embarrassing and humiliating to other people, if it's gross, she's all about it. Like she's a, she's fascinated by it. Anything that there might be a bad odor, there might be a bad smell, there might be a bad sound. She's all about it. Like she is fascinated by the gross and the disgusting. Like that is her jam. So let's watch the clip. Yours? <laughs> Ow, I like the smell. <laughs> I like the smell. Woman, you are so gross. Because we know you don't brush your doggone teeth. I'm telling you, she's got this weird fascination for just things that make you go, what? Like this is we're talking about the same woman that will pick her ear with her finger and then smell her finger. Or she'll scratch your butt and smell her fingers. I mean, that's what kind of person we're talking about here. A fascination with bad smells. Like, she loves it. All right. So, moving on to Ruth Langmore. Says, tell me this isn't a toddler going to hide in the corner to crap their diaper just like they do. Just standing there crapping. This is genuinely disturbing. Why did she turn around and look at the camera? That legit, the, that, can mom see me hiding look? I've got my theories, but before I give my theories, let me just blow up the clip and show you guys. Okay, so before we get started with this, I would like to give my observation. This feels staged to me. This feels like a setup. This feels like something that somebody would ask for and pay for. You guys catching my drift? This feels like somebody had a certain request. And they asked her to do something in a certain location, in a certain way, and they would give her payment. So she went to the kitchen and she just stood there with her face away from the camera. And she passed gas. And for those that are wondering, it... Is farting a fetish? Yeah, it is. It is an actual thing. I think that Chantal is catering to the fart fetish, guys. That might be where she's getting some of her extra money from. And that's why she's upping the fart content on her channel. But let's watch the clip. Because she's just standing there. What is she doing? She's not doing anything. That was a loud one. And you can't, you can't tell me she didn't feel that inside of her gut. And she thought it was funny to sit there and just loudly fart like that. I, I can't relate. I can't relate going on vacation to a beautiful place. And the height of my funny is being in a cheap room and passing gas on camera. Like there's so many other things outside my door that I could do that would put a smile on my face. But shutting all of that out just to be inside of a room and eat a bunch of processed food to the point where I get bubble guts and I'm passing gas. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we really envy your life, Chantal, truly. Uh, Misanthropope Lulu says, foodie beauty, she definitely blew up the toilet. It's written all over her face. Also, they were plunging and what? And flushing it like mad. Chantal, did you do that? Did you really do that? Did you blow up the doggone toilet? 
So I was watching another live earlier. Somebody else reacting to you. Not only did you blow up the toilet, but I guess you're in your room and you are creating quite the mess for the maids to pick up and you're not tipping. You're horrible. And you're in that room and I guess you are overusing the AC and, and you're causing quite the leak. Like you, you've been there for less than a week and you're already being a problem to other people. I hope they kick you out. I really do. So let's watch the clip. And for context, the maids had to come in and clean. Chantal stayed right there. She didn't leave the room so they can do their cleaning. She stayed there just watching them like a hawk. Let's watch the clips. Like, like she could have gone outside for just a few minutes and sat near the koi pond or something and let them clean. But she had to sit right there and she had a live stream going. Oh yeah, Adrian, no. No, no. Yeah. Investigating the water leak, it might be coming from the AC. Knowing you, Chantal, you got that AC cranked down so low that it's not used being cranked down that low. Next clip. I go to bed at seven and I wake up at like six. So 11 hours. I'm still not fully 100%. Yeah. Yes, Bobby. You know, I know I know the Thai people are very, very nice and they're very polite. But since she insisted on staying in her room and basically trashing the place and she's not tipping anybody and she's basically blowing up the toilet, I just have to wonder. You know, because when you have people that live in a town, businesses, don't they usually talk to each other? Don't they? Isn't it like a situation where everybody knows everybody and everybody talks to everybody? I have to wonder what the hotel would say about someone like her to other people in the community. If Sean saw how to check out, would it be a case she goes to another motel and before she gets there, other motels and hotels have been warned about her. You know, like a phone call has, has been made and word has spread about this, this woman, this oversized woman who is cheap and doesn't tip and destroys things. Because people do talk, Chantal. They, people that live, especially in small towns and such, they talk. Word gets around. Word gets around fast. So if I were you, I'd behave myself in, in, in Bangkok. All right. So moving on. True Secret says, what did she buy from this stranger when there are green places all around her? She put it on mute and no one can hear them talk. No way she would do this if Salah was with her. So, yeah, that was weird. She knows where all the dispensaries are. Yet she's buying something from a stranger. Chantal, I really, really hope you're not buying something of street quality, if you know what I'm saying. Because stuff like that would be illegal. I really hope you're not buying something of street quality. That would be a definite no-no. I'm just saying. Uh, perfectly imperfect says do not under any circumstances freeze frame a timestamp one hour 17 minute nine seconds on nad's live stream from last night 
perfectly imperfect. You got to know whenever you say something like that, some everybody that's on Twitter that's nosy, they're going to go look. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I haven't seen it, but I've looked at the comments to your post and I, I, I got an idea of what it is and I don't want to see it. I really don't want to see it. But thank you for the, the heads up. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Queen of WTF says, wow, just wow. I am assuming she is referring to Natter with this statement. What's going on, cutie? You've had Natter on the brain quite a bit lately. Not because they're talking, that's why, I think. Let's watch. I've ever been with has pretended to love me. Nobody I've ever been with has pretended to love me. Nobody. Not a single person. You can tell. Even if they treat you like crap, they can still love you. <laughs> what? Okay, like, wait, I, I got to dissect that piece by piece. There was too much there. Let me go back here. Okay, go ahead, Chantal. Nobody I've ever been with has pretended to love me. Nobody. Okay, that part. Nobody I've ever been with has pretended to love me. That's because they never really loved you in the first place. And then with you acting the way that you act, they can't even like, like you as a person. You have no redeeming qualities. You're not a good person. You're not nice. You're mean, rotten, and evil. You're a horrible, selfish self-centered, self-absorbed narcissist. So no, people are not going to pretend to love somebody like that. They can't even like somebody like that. But do you remember what you said about Natter long ago? You said, all he has to do is fake love me and I'll give him the world. I'll give him whatever he wants. So you, you basically... You threw down the gauntlet and you said, a man does not have to truly love me for me to give him everything. He just has to put on a facade in front of the rest of the world. And that's good enough for me. He doesn't have to go the distance with me. He doesn't have to give me his heart. As long as he puts on the facade in front of other people that he cares, I I'm good. I am truly good with that. And you tried and you tried and you tried to finagle and trick Natter into a relationship and it just didn't work. You tried to buy his love. That didn't work. You just would not acknowledge there are just certain things in life that are not for sale and you can't buy. You can seduce somebody with money, but it doesn't mean they're going to fall in love with you, girl. You did not learn the lesson with Natter, and now you're repeating it with Salah. You thought you could seduce him with your money. And he likes all the nice things, sure, but it doesn't mean he's going to love you and look past all of your faults and imperfections and evilness. He's just going to accept the gifts and say thanks and keep it pushing. You don't know what love is, Chantal. You don't know. I, I'm convinced you don't know what love is. Your idea of love is selfish. It's all about you. It's not about the other person and who they are and what they want. It's always just about you and people catering to you. That's not love. And since you don't know what it is, and since you can't put it into practice, you're never going to truly have it. Not within yourself, not within another person. Not a single person. You can tell. Even if they treat you like crap, they can still love you. If a person truly loves you, they wouldn't treat you like crap. When it comes to relationships, yes, there are going to be 
rough patches. There's going to be fights. There's going to be disagreements. There's going to be moments where you don't see eye to eye with the person that you are connected to. But the undercurrent of all of that is the sense of care and concern and compassion and empathy and connection. And you get past that rough patch. You weather that storm. But if you're with somebody and they treat you like crap, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, there's no sense of love or respect there. What exactly do you have? Nothing. Like you're, you're twisted, Chantal. Somebody could treat you like absolute garbage and you basically do those mental, emotional gymnastics to convince yourself, oh, they still care about me. I know it. I can feel it. No, they don't. If they're treating you like crap, they don't care about you. Because if they cared about you, they wouldn't treat you like crap, would they? Exactly. Thank you. Uh, she's so twisted in the head. Um, Wilder says, that's a beautiful thing. This mama dear stopped traffic to ask for help. Her baby was in danger. She led the couple for miles, always making sure they were following they found her baby fawn stuck in a fence. Oh, poor thing. Oh. So they got the baby loose. Okay. Uh, Kristen says, was this person live for six hours? Salah, please pay more attention to your wife. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I love you, Kristen. You, you said it. We thought it. The, the fact that Chantal's in Thailand and she's live for six freaking hours when she could be out doing anything, showing us anything, proves just how lonely she is. Proves that Miss World Traveler, when she travels the world, she doesn't know what to do when she gets there. I like she'll go to different parts of the world and no matter where she's at, she has a, she does no clue where she's at and what's going on, and she's not willing to explore. All right. Uh, Better Squared says, Foodie Beauty, telling the chat stealing is bad. It's about your soul and morality. Isn't this the chick who would eat her DoorDash food and try to lie for refunds? Yep. Yep. I remember those nights at the, at the Canadian Villa. She would actually do that. She'd rip people off. She would order DoorDash and Postmates. She would eat all of the food or most of the food on camera while everybody watched. And then sit there and say, well, the food wasn't good. And she would call and get a refund so she could eat free food. And she did that a lot. So essentially, she was stealing from and ripping off different restaurants and businesses that's why she preferred the delivery because if she went to an actual restaurant, she couldn't get away with that crap. She could not get away with coming in physically, ordering a meal, eating most of it, and then asking for the food to be given to her for free. They would never let her do that. All right. Tat Von B says, how in the F do you get cream cheese in your eye and still continue eating? Well, she's feral. She has no home training. That's how. Look. How do you how do you get cream cheese on your face and not know what's there? Like she honestly, you know what this is? Whatever she's smoking, whatever she took, it must be good for her like to not notice what's going on here. Like cream cheese in her freaking eye. Uh, True Seeker says she admits to going to the bathroom on a country road, not working because she will just shower when she gets home. She's admitting a lot on this trip. It's going to be like Cuba 2.0, just waiting for an unprovoked rage. Never said just joking. So that's the truth. Let's watch the clip. Somewhere. If you're that bad, you have to go. Just go anywhere in a bush if you have to. 
And who cares about wiping? Just shower when you get home. Ew. <laughs> She's so nasty. I mean, we are talking about the same woman that back in Canada, she would literally be driving alone in the dark at night and then get out of her car and, and poop by the side of the road. Yeah, she did that. And she would say, it's so relaxing to do this. It's true. Me when I have diarrhea. Yeah, if you have that bad, like if you have to go that bad. And I am noticing there's an uptick, not just in her farting, but talking about going to the bathroom, mentioning going to the bathroom, talking about her bowel movements. Again, I'm wondering if the fetish guys are paying extra for that. I mean, I've had to go pull down a good old country road and go in the friggin' ditch. I mean, I've had a lot of takeout napkins in the car that I had to use. I mean, God, ew. <sighs> you know, I remember way back in the day when she was in Canada, she had a bit of anxiety about leaving the house. Like she was so overly concerned and hyper fixated on she had to be near a bathroom just in case she had to go due to the fact that she stuffed her guts with food all the time. Like she never knew what was going to pop off with her guts. But yeah, I remember that. I remember when she was just like, I have to be near a bathroom. I have to be near a toilet. Yep. Uh, perfectly imperfect. So she loves her gross smells. We've also seen her pick her butt and sniff her fingers after. Yep. Uh, failure to lunch says she's such a fake, greedy, selfish blank. Uh, foodie beauty, doggone it. Sorry about that. My mouse is acting up. Booty Beauty has gone back to her old self. Let's watch. <laughs> I have the closest parts too. Not just like beep. go first. I don't have go first. This is the hat. It's like a poached egg. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. I think I can see the egg umbilical cord. <laughs> okay, here, let's try this. Beauty bite, I'm starving. Beauty bite. Mmm. That was really good. Food for not. No. Yep, definitely old parts of foodie coming back. She's showing more of her original personality. This is the foodie that we remember, the one who farted and burped and did gross things and, and had the gross smells and talking with her mouth full. This is the one that we came to know in Canada. Remember this one, girl world? She's back. Mm -hmm. I have been. Mm. <laughs> well, that was gross. <laughs> and you know what's funny, Chantal? You like to tell people that you went to Kuwait and you became a changed person, right? You said that. Like, I went to Kuwait, and it changed me. I'm much more modest now. Have you? Because here you are in Thailand. You've been there less than a week, and you are reverting back to the self that you were before you left Canada. <laughs> so a truly changed person, once they've gone through their changes and they've matured and they've grown up, those changes take effect and they stay with the person. But you, you've never changed. Never. This, this person right here in front of me, that's who you really are. That's who you've always been. It doesn't matter what clothing you put on. You can't hide your true self. You just can't. You just can't. Uh, Tofu says, how does someone even fart that loud? Well, she does. She does. And the way that she farted, can I just make an observation? It sounded like she had a diaper on. 
like she had some pull-up pants or something on just just from the sound of it it didn't sound like she had on just a pair of pants and panties i know this sounds weird and nasty to say but it sounds like she's got something on underneath that made it sound a certain way it, it sounds like she's got some pull-up pants or an adult diaper on and if she does it it wouldn't surprise me i mean if she's got bubble guts all the time and she can't control her bowels she might need to wear something like that so truth seeker says that chantal is the old Chantal is back and expelling gas as usual. She did that on purpose. She could have put it on mute, but didn't. High and gassy in Thailand. Let's watch. I'm sorry. She, she farted at least four or five times in the live stream. And I remember back in the day when she got together with Salah, she just said the word but. And he got mad about her saying the word but. Now she's in Thailand and she's just saying, screw you, Salah. I'm going to be as gross as I want to be. And she is. She's passing gas on camera and having a good old time with that. That's so nasty, Chantal. Check your pants. You shot your pants, didn't you? <laughs> oh, Chad, I have to slow it down. Shit. Oh, <laughs> wicked. Disgusting. Like, she's literally just standing there waiting for it to happen. That's why I'm wondering, did somebody pay her to do that? Was that part of a fetish request? Because she literally said, she's literally standing. Look, look, let's blow it up so you guys can see. Look, since when does Chantal go to the kitchen and just stand there like that? Look at her. Hiding her face. It's like she was standing there and like forcing it out. She got her legs together and like she's squeezing them, but she's trying to squeeze it out. Did somebody pay for that? I think somebody paid for that. I think they did. Because it's not like she's just walking and it just, you know, comes out. She's literally standing there with her hands braced on the counter and like just standing there like probably pressing down with her abdominal muscles, like, you know, just trying to get it to come out. Bent over and everything. You're so gross, Chantal. Take that stuff to only hands, okay? If you're going to do that, do that there. All right, so Hello YouTube says she said he is supposed to come by next week, but anything can happen. She makes coffee. She lets out a huge fart while making coffee. She dies of laughter saying sorry. She lets out two more explosive farts. Yeah, like that's her idea of fun. She can't be gross around Salah, so she's going to be gross all by her dog on self. Uh, Fondue Pondu says, Holy F. So, Chantal, you try to tell people that you're 330 pounds? No. No. Where is your arm? <laughs> look. Do y'all look? Her arms disappeared, bro. Do you see that? Her arms disappeared. That is so wild. But she looks unhealthy. All right. Something nice from Universe. A staircase designed by Leonardo da Vinci. 1516. 
that staircase is stunning. It's it's flowy, it's fluid. I'm I'm in love. I am. Uh, why you should have a cat? A mother's love. Look, Mama Kitty is is washing the baby. That's so sweet. Uh, perfectly imperfect says nine hundred dollars a month car loan, so Salah can pay it off quicker. We know why. Yeah, so there was made mention about the amount of money being paid for the car. That Timu Mobile, it's it's not a BMW. It's not a Mercedes. How could the car loan be nine hundred bucks? That's a cheap car. They come with a freaking uh, fire extinguisher. Is he telling Chantal that he's got to pay 900 bucks a month for the car loan when it might be actually a lot less and he's just pocketing the difference? Maybe, maybe that could very well be. All right. So we're going to get into the live itself. I just want to give you guys some of the Twitter highlights of the stuff going on. Okay. And there's Chantal. And no, we are not staying the entire time. I refuse. Uh, give me just a second. I'm going to turn the light on because it's going to get dark in here eventually. All right. So let's get to, let's get to, and I hope you guys enjoy. And I, you know what, Chantal, the, you're so unprofessional. You literally won't talk until people are in the room. You just stand, you just sit there looking bored. Look at her just sitting there. Good morning, Mouse. Hello, Ella, Anna, Miss Goody, Lorena. Hello, Kitty. Me, Mouse, Kitty, Sarah. Hi, Millie. Ladidi, Llama, P Mac, L5, Weinstrands, Brandy, Geo, Easy B, Play. Don't look happy. Kitty Charms, how old? We can be lonely together. <laughs> lonely Hearts Unite, Sam G, Benarama, Bonus Noodles, Force Bay, All Kinds of Atoms. Okay. And then she's going to take about 10 minutes and like say hello. So let's just move ahead about 10 minutes. Oh, my freaking wing has to come off. Yeah, I know, West Coast. I actually don't even need any more mods right now, honestly. Have you said hi to us? The koi fish. Hi. The koi fish have a troll channel. Oh, my gosh. Have a troll name. You have a real life in Thailand versus what's a real life mean? So she so she went from making a post saying, I would like to get a few extra mods and and you guys, uh, for those of you that want to be mods, here are the requirements. You have to give up endless amounts of your time to me, even though I'm not paying you. And one of the requirements is you got to pay your membership. She made that post saying she needed mods. All of a sudden, she doesn't need mods. It's amazing how she went from, I need mods. And if you guys want a mod wrench, uh, here's how you can do it. You can pay a membership. You have to be a trusted beezer. And you got to promise that you're going to be here a lot for me. The moment that she found out that that's against TOS to sell the mod wrenches that could get her in trouble, suddenly she doesn't need mods. It's not that important. You know, the, the idea just kind of lost its appeal once she figured out that she can't make money selling the mod wrenches. They do have a table here, beautiful soul. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning on the table now, but it's it's not uh, high enough to show you. So Kitty Charms Daily says, what can I do to be a mod, Chantal? 
Well, according to Chantal, you have to be a member or someone that you give her lots and lots of money through Super Chats. And then once you do that, she might give you a wrench. She might. Although there's no specified amount of time that you'll get to keep the wrench. I mean, Chantal's a, a con artist, Kitty. Understand that you're talking to a con artist. They could say, yeah, yeah, I'll give you a mod wrench if you tip X amount of dollars. Often. And then they give you the wrench for a day and then take it back the next day. And what are you going to do about it? Nothing. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> the mod wrench feature is something that YouTube gives people for free. So how anybody could basically try to sell that to another person is, it lacks integrity. How can you take something that is given to you for free and try to sell it to another when it costs you nothing to give out the wrench? But Chantal is always looking for ways to try to make easy, quick money out of people. You guys put food in the Oh. I have a huge bag of laundry. Oh, God, for them. <laughs> I'm getting my sweaty clothes. I feel bad for the people that have to do your laundry, too. They probably got to wash those clothes like 10 times to get the smell out. Just because you 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 wear the clothes until there, there's layers, sweat and filth on them. And it takes several washings to get them com completely clean again. Don't worry, I'll leave a good tip. No, you won't. You can go out and do your own. You know what, Chantal? I hope that while you're in Bangkok, I really hope that word gets around about you. That if you're rude, if you're cheap, if you make a mess, if you blow up toilets and you stop them up and you make extra work for the hotel staff, I hope that word gets around about you. I know the nice uh, uh, Thai people, it is the land of smiles, but still, I hope they protect their own and they talk about you and word gets around town about you to be careful around you and you know be wary of you because you're cheap and you're a bit of a headache, I'm sure that they, they're already talking about you. If you're in any kind of industry anywhere in the world, like any, any town, whatever the industry is, you're all connected. You guys talk to each other. I'm sure that everybody in Bangkok knows who she is. Something there. The thing is, is like I choose not to go out in Kuwait because of the heat lately, right? But I tried to go out in a few cafes, but... We'll, we'll do a lot of things in the winter. Don't worry. Hey, Chantal, you know what? I used to work in a restaurant. I used to work in the food industry like years and years ago. Let me tell you something. <laughs> we always remember the bad customers. The ones who are rude. The ones who are messy. And yes, we talk about you. And we remember you. And I'm sure that's the same for hotels and motels. You appreciate the ones who are courteous and mannerly and nice. You appreciate them a lot because you do get your fair share of the rude ones. But the really rude ones, the ones that are completely out of pocket, yeah. Yeah, you talk about them with people in the hotel and people outside the hotel and you tell other hotels, hey, this person's still in town. They may uh, they may come see you. You might want to say no to them. No vacancy. <laughs> People talk, okay, in a town. They talk. What happened? Arm shake for who? Dragonfly? It doesn't smell like fish. I don't know. I can't smell it. Teardrop, there you are. Everyone was like, where's Teardrop? <laughs> you guys don't have to be at my live streams if you can't. I get messages from you guys like, I can't be in your live. It's okay, you know? I don't want you to think like that way. 
No, I don't have C. diff. She wants it, though. She talked about having C. diff. And for those who do not know what C. diff is, it's, it's a contagious superbug. And as I understand it, uh, if you have C. diff, there's no mistaking the smell of C. diff. And because it is a superbug, you have to be very, very careful about where you use the bathroom and who uses the bathroom after you because it's, it's, it's a super bug, you know, that even cleaning products will not clean, uh, kill the bacteria. Yeah, once upon a time she had C. diff. Yeah. I love Kuwait. I, don't, I mean, no matter where you go, you're not going to love the weather, you know? Like, I hate the winter, so. I just wish that I could live in a country that only has wind, I um, mean, uh, fall and spring. A night market? Yeah, that's on my to do list. <laughs> you're late, you're late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. You're late, you're late, you're late. Where's my brookie? <clears throat> you get so bored in a hotel a lot of people will get bored in hotels some people like stay mostly in a hotel just depends on the person i like a mixture of both yeah c diff hey. so Chris, simply krista says c diff is an intestinal infection that's nasty yeah that's what i've heard hey, hey, love. winters are awesome El the people are suggesting where Chantal should go for her next trip. Somebody said California is the next trip. <laughs> That's funny. El Sky, you got jokes. Chantal in California? Now that would be some content. Because I used to live there. <laughs> oh my God. You know, California is one of those places that if you've got a good, good amount of money. You can live in a really nice area and you might like it. But if you don't have a lot of money, if you're not throwing down $3,000, $4,000 in rent a month, you're probably not going to live in a good area and you're not going to have a good time. There are many parts of Cali that are they're dirty, they're filthy. Uh, it's just a mess. Okay. It's a mess. Uh, no disrespect to anybody that lives in Cali. Maybe you live in a really good area. And, and I've seen many beautiful parts of Cali. I just, parts that I lived in were not so nice. <laughs> but I just can't see Chantal in Cali. It's not exactly the cheapest place to live, you know, or travel to. I love the winters in Kuwait. It's like below 20s most of the time. In the middle of the day when it's hot, it's like 20s, but. Han has premier fish food and flat screen. Yeah, energy. Ireland weather. And petting Jews. <laughs> He's sleeping actually. Julia kept waking him up. So he's been in and out of sleep messaging me, you know? So he'll be maybe sleeping for a little bit. Hi, Adrian. You know, Chantal, you can just stop now. Every single time we turn around with you during your lives, because you're alive so much, you keep making the same excuses for the same person. He's busy. He's asleep. He's busy. He's asleep. Why can't you just come out and tell us that it's over? that you guys are essentially done. Maybe you haven't figured out what to say to make yourself look good in front of girl world to where we won't give you crap. Spoiler, we're gonna give you crap anyway. But you're trying to work out some story to make it seem like you're the victim and the hero. So you keep saying for now, oh, he's busy, he's asleep, he's busy, he's asleep. Girl, we know, it's over. You're trying to figure out the last parts of the story, but it's over. Just, just come out and say so. Send me a picture of Julia 
He goes, this cat, I wish you were here because it, it, she doesn't wake him up well sometimes, but if I'm awake, no. But if we're both sleeping, like she, he sent me a picture of her bushy tailed and bright eyed, like like in the middle of um, a zoomie, like <laughs> her beezer face, I should post it. She's just wild all the time, like when she's playful. So she keeps waking him up to play, but it's like sleep time for him. He's four hours behind, but <clears throat> yeah, I'm feeling a bit better. Hi, Melissa, Nacho Man. Hey, Island Dragonfly. Yes, I'm gonna get my, let me check if my breakfast is here. Oh, still coming. Oh, well. <sighs> yeah, Yoda, that sounds nice. Can we shop at Chanel? Hey, Amelia. Are you buying? I got it. Um, Haley Marie, welcome. I bought, um, I don't have plans to drop. I'm trying to figure that out as always. And um, so, shut up, Chantal. Something that people have pointed out in different chats, that if Chantal wanted to basically save on money while in Thailand, the hotel that she's staying at, that she can rent a microwave for like $25 for an entire month. So if she's staying there for two months, that's 50 bucks. But with a microwave, she's got like a little mini fridge in her room. She can go and buy uh, portion correct healthy meals, keep them in the fridge. And anything that needs to be heated up can be heated up in the microwave. That could save tons of money. Just getting that microwave. I ordered breakfast. I ordered corned beef hash with a poached egg on it and a bagel. And she's so stupid because she is right there at the hotel. She could get herself together, walk to the 7-Eleven, get a breakfast sandwich or two and save on the delivery fee. Or she could go out, get a hot plate or something, bring that back to the room then go to the 7-Eleven and buy some simple eggs or supplies and make her own doggone breakfast. Hey, cool gamer. I know, I know. That's a sensible way of thinking. We can't have that around here. I'm just saying. I didn't go to the shisha shop, no. I got, I chickened out. I was just like, yeah, I know, Vula. I think my food's here. My food's arriving. Deadly and genius. Yeah, he's coming. Maybe next week. Um, I feel like on and off, you know. Hey, Stacy. Debbie. I'm going to go down for my CPAP marks. Three hours behind. Chanel once. You know, she talked about Salah might be coming next week. I don't think it's Salah coming. I don't think Salah is going to be joining Chantal in Thailand. I think it might be somebody else. And that's why she's in a fine mood. Chanel, oh, Chanel smells good. No, I have to go down. So we have to go down to the lobby and get it. Okay, why did I used to have a whole bunch of chin hair? Chantal, shut up. Sometimes your teeth are yellow, sometimes white. I don't get it. Vacation is relaxing. There's a lot of things. I'm okay, gonna... so like I scooted ahead a bit, but what's going on right now is uh, I guess the room that she's staying in, they come in every few days to clean. You have to let them in to clean. So Chantal let them in to clean. I, I guess they're unplugging the toilet. And instead of leaving the room for a few minutes or going out on the balcony, she's sitting right there watching them like a hawk, as if they're going to take something. What to do with Salah, the conjuring thing, aquarium world, and Siam Paragon. Um, what else? What 
gonna no. I would be so I would be so embarrassed. Someone like her, she's not embarrassed. Nothing embarrasses her. But being in a room and the staff coming in to clean, and you've absolutely plugged up the toilet to where they have to take a plunger and plunge your poo down the toilet. How gross are you? How gross are you? Oh, really? Andrew? I'll have to keep that in mind. So people in the chat are asking this person, Rue Blue says, what did you do to the toilet? Did you break it with the 7-Eleven toilet bees? More than likely. I mean, she's blowing up her own guts with all the fast food she's eating. Because, yeah, you want to eat a variety of things. Hey, back on my BS. Um, shovels. Yep. You want to see the subway system? I've, I've never even been. Where, where did I go on the subway? I've never been in the Montreal subway in Canada. But I think that it's um really. Um, so Stinky Poo Dorian says we don't want to see a museum. We want to see Bangkok. Out of the mouths of babes, Chantal. Your own subs are telling you they want to see more of Bangkok. They don't want you to take the cheap, easy way out and just go to a, a museum and screw around. They want to see more Bangkok. Go to the beaches. Go take walks. Show them things they wouldn't normally see. You're not going to listen, are you? So long when I went... And then I freaked out and we went back to the hotel. You know, and the fact that the cleaning staff were taking a while to clean her room should let y'all know just how dirty that place is. Because normally if you stay in a motel or hotel room, many of us, we clean up after ourselves, don't we? Making sure to put the garbage in the garbage can, uh, put the towels in a separate section. We clean up after ourselves, not her. She's like, oh, we got people in here that will clean. I'll just make a mess and let them do all the work. But they're taking a minute to clean her room. Um, I was in a bad mood. We went to try the, um, we're supposed to do a couple's vlog, the MRT. And, um. I freaked out. Like I started getting really bad anxiety and everything. And by the way, like, by the way, Chantal, if you're in the room, ceiling on the bed, how are they going to change your bed sheets? How are they going to change your pillowcases? You're probably sweating and stinking all over those sheets, and they can't change them because you're there. So because you won't leave the room, you're going to be laying on dirty blankets and pillows and things like that. Started having a bit of a panic attack. Where comes my little little doll? I was very depressed in the villa at one point. Like this is ridiculous. She's in a small room. She's not in a suite, and the cleaning staff are still there. How much mess did you make, Chantal? Yeah, exactly. Pure drug. He's supposed to come by next week, he thinks. I don't know, anything can happen, right? So, that's tied up if you're a beef. Yum hash, it's corn beef hash. Hey, average. It's getting cold, it's okay. I'm not finicky about food temperature. We're going to The fact that there's more than one person doing the cleaning in her room is confusing to me wouldn't it just need to be one person there seems like there's multiple people kaya toast oh i love bread talk okay moving on a little 
Hey, dude and Chad. <laughs> Millie. I did get Indian food last night. Is that the reason why the toilet was blown up in the morning and you left that for the staff? Rude. I watched old episodes of Degrassi and ate paneer. And nothing against Indian food. I'm just saying she always has bubble guts. So imagine like spicy Indian food on top of like processed food from 7-Eleven on, on top of, you know, the sweet desserts. I'm sure her stomach was just like having a, having a moment with itself. So does it surprise me that they're coming in and they're having to deal with the toilet? No. I mean, they call it bubble guts for a reason. Your, your guts are bubbling and eventually the bubbles got to burst. And that was the best time of my life. Besides my courthouse marriage. That was awesome too. Thanks. Wiping her hands on her clothes. Pam. I love camels. Eating. You guys know how I feel about that. Let's move on. Let's move all the way on. Does she go to the kitchen? No, she's sealing. He's probably blocked. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure he's blocked. Okay, back it up. Back it up for a second. Back it up. That was important. Let's go back it up just a little bit. That one time I told you guys the story time. Doggone it. I hate the internet sometimes. Nina, here, Chad. Oh, no, does this make me a feeder according to the React channels? <laughs> Nina Bachelor. Thank you, Nina. Thank you. <laughs> no, because you're not funnel feeding me Oreo ice cream. Okay, you're good. <laughs> oh, look. Look who's in the chat. Look who's in the chat. Y'all, look. Look beneath the super chat. Look who it is. Desert Prince for you. Natter. That's Natter. That's Natter under a different name. There he is. That's the reason why she's got a smile on her face. Natter was the one she really wanted to be with. There he is. That's why she's happy. That's why she's happy in Thailand. That's why she's not freaking out in Thailand because she's talking to Natter again. That makes her incredibly happy. And she's doing it openly and publicly. It's her way of getting back at Salah. Not that she did ever cared for him, but I'm sure that he has ticked her off and she is being defiant having him in her chat room. Like she's so much of it. She's very childish. Like nanny, nanny, boo, boo. I'm going to talk to who I want to talk to. But there he is. Y'all see him. Desert Prince for you. That's Natter. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's really nice of you. I have really bad gas like i don't know why i need some vino how do you say vino in thai yeah listen chantal i see you for years you've been doing the fetish content on your channel not just the feedy stuff but exhibitionism voyeurism flashing flashing all your private parts publicly the belching the burping the farting you cater to the fetish crowds and you're hoping they like you so much. They pay you off to the side for fetish content. I see you. You're doing that adult stuff in a place where it does not belong. So yeah, you, you're all about the gross and the disgusting. You like doing that kind of content, but you want to get paid for it. So you'll put it on YouTube. 
and you're hoping that the fetish guys are on YouTube and they come across you and go, ooh, somebody who will do what I want them to do. And they'll talk to you off on the side. I know what you're up to. I mean, you guys don't know. She might have bubble guts on purpose. Like if she's got guys that are throwing her money behind the scenes and they're telling her to pass gas loudly, grossly, she might be deliberately eating a combination of things to make herself gassy. Please keep farting. You are sick in the head. <laughs> you need a cork. That won't save me. And I'm just going to say something, and this is just a possibility. This is not a definite thing. Chantal caters to the feedy people. True. She also caters to the fetish people of different kinds. Also true. Because of Chantal portraying herself as a newly reverted Muslim woman, there might be people in the Fiji world. They might have a true dislike for those who are Muslim. There might be people who are Islamophobic. That they have the feedy fetish and they want to mix that with hatred or seeing a Muslim person doing foul things. You know, in the world, uh, the feedy world, regular feedy content is a dime a dozen. So anything that a person can do in that world to make extra money to create a niche within a niche, if they do that, that means they can ask extra money. So here's Chantal portraying herself as a Muslim woman, even though she's not, in my opinion, but she's portraying herself that way. And she's doing all kinds of haram content. She's smoking she on camera, she's belching, she's farting. You know, there might be some people out there, they they may want to see a Muslim person doing haram things, uh, eating a bunch of food. That's gluttony. That's considered haram. So she yells and screams at girl world. Oh, you guys are Islamophobic. You guys are against the Muslim people. At the same time, she might be catering to people that might have a true hatred uh, for Islam that might have a true hatred for Muslim people so much so they want to see a Muslim person deface themselves I'm not saying it's going on absolutely but the potential is there and if Chantal gets offered enough money to do a video she's not going to care what the intentions are all she's going to care about is if she's getting paid so just want to say that what the pepper gives you guys Carolina. I'm not really on my diet. More. <laughs> the girl who wants to send donuts is in Thailand. That's why. So look at these freaking idiots, these beezers. There are people in her chat saying, how do, AB says, how do we send donuts? Here's another person saying, there's an all you can eat buffet that is very close, a one minute walk for 300 baht or $8.75. It's called a long suki. So it's not enough that she's 500 plus pounds. People are asking, how do we send donuts to you? Oh, and by the way, there's this all-you-can-eat buffet. So, yeah. Y'all feedies over there, we see you. 
Swordfish and Dude is still trying to use you for views. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not working. I mean, who's watching them at this point? Like, what, 20 people? I don't think I'm the problem, buddy. Just saying. We're on the donuts. It's cheap day. When am I on the diet? Never. Diets wouldn't work on her anyway. She's got an issue with food like nobody's business. A diet's not going to fix it. She needs a lifestyle change, period. What I hate the most is the fat shaming coming from that ugly, sinewy loser. This is all I'm going to say. Me being fat in a problem when I was paying your rent. Yeah. Did you see Swordfish was in here? No. Probably a troll. See, she's over there trying to flex that she paid for his rent. <laughs> she's over there trying to flex like, well, it was me being fat wasn't a problem when I was paying your rent. Chantal, do you understand that when you try to throw an insult like that at somebody, you look just as bad, if not worse? You're confessing that you paid the rent of, a, of an abusive crackhead. But since you're going to tell the story, let's tell all of it. You know, since you brought it up and all, let's tell the whole story. Let's put it out there for anybody who's curious. What's the whole story? Oh, Rose Thorne's going to tell you. For those of you that weren't around for that entire period, Chantal was over there paying his rent. Chantal was buying all his groceries. He did uh, cooking lives and cooking videos. And she would go to his stores like Adonis and Farm Boy and get like the best food for Natter. We're talking steak. We're talking shrimp. She was buying him all the good stuff. She was giving him money. She was buying him clothes. She was taking him on trips to uh, Montreal and staying in like five-star hotels. She bought him an iPad. She bought him an iPhone. She bought him all kinds of party favors. Everything. She did everything for Natter. Not because she was a good person. She wanted control of him. And she thought that by buying stuff for him, everything that she bought would mean that she would get control. And she never did. But she's like trying to flex. Oh, my weight wasn't a problem when I bought you stuff. If you had any kind of self-pride and self-worth, you wouldn't have done all that. Sorry, you wouldn't have. He's probably blocked. So I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure he's He's probably blocked. Huh. That's interesting. He's probably blocked. He's probably blocked. You know, if there was somebody in my life that I was claiming that he was abusive to me, there was some sort of a DV relationship, there'd be no guesswork to blocking them. It would just happen you understand that, Chantal? That when somebody has hurt you for real, you do block them. You block them out of your life in every way possible. You get as far away from them as you possibly can. You don't think about them. You don't bring them up in conversation. You don't bring them up on a live stream. But you're saying, oh, he's probably blocked. So he did all these awful things to you and you don't know if you blocked him off your channel. Fake phony victim. What? Predator in sheep's clothing. 
Don't get me started, Chantal. Right, no name? How are you going to sleep with somebody for like almost two years and then make fun of their weight after? Because he didn't sleep with you. You're using romantic terms. He never slept with you. He may have had relations with you, but you can do that with somebody and not be in love, Chantal. And we all know about Natter's habits. We all know about how he was taking all kinds of pills and powder and Viagra and he was tweaking all the way out. And that's why he was doing things with you. But in your head, the dialogue in your head is that while he was in that 90 mile an hour altered state, he was that way because he was passionate with you when you turned him on. No, he was just tweaked out. But it, according to you, inside your head, oh, he really, really wanted me. No, nah, he was just tweaking and you were just there. Because you're, you're salty and you have nothing else. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyways. Oh, he said, where's your bitch? Nice, nice. She probably told him to say that. Look at that. Look at that smug look on her face. Look at that duper's delight smile. She's been talking to Natter and she told him to say that. She told him to say that. Do you, do, how do you, how do you like living with a man and paying his bills and he still comes in here, here to talk to me? Hmm? Oh, and, and and Natter is pretty much outing himself. He's saying, oh, wow, are we re rewriting history now? Outing yourself. Right. I said she's sitting right beside you. Oh. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Listen, even when Chantal and Natter were back in the day going at each other, I always felt like it was phony, that the fighting back and forth was phony. It was phony because if, if somebody has really ticked you off, I mean, really ticked you off, you'll take out a blowtorch and you'll burn the bridge and you won't leave even a stick of wood left behind. You, you just take out a flamethrower and boom, let's just burn it all. But Chantal and Natter, when they went back and forth, I always felt like they stopped at a certain line with each other. They yelled and they screamed and they made a bunch of threats, but neither one will cross that red line. Chantal could have gotten Natter's channel taken away from him. She never did. He could have gotten her channel taken away from her. He never did. They would go only so far with one another and they would go no further. Why? Because they were still talking. Because he did not want her out of his life and she did not want him out of her life. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. He's in her chat right now. And she's perfectly fine with that. Miss DV victim is okay with her supposed abuser in the chat with her. And she's not reacting. She's not freaking out. She's smirking. She thinks it's funny. Do you see what a fake she is now? Because a real victim would never be okay with this shit. Not at all. <laughs> Said I better stop talking about him. Excuse me. No, 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 no. That doesn't work that way. You, every single live stream you have, apparently talk about me. So I get to say... Chantal, I think one of the main reasons why he got his channel back is that you talked to somebody at YouTube. You were angry that his channel got taken away. You being in Kuwait, now in Thailand, you're not there in Canada to see him physically. 
So seeing him online is the best you can do. You got mad because his channel got taken away and you couldn't watch him anymore. So they gave his channel back for you. Do whatever the hell I want. All right. So, yeah. If you don't like people talking about your shitty behavior, don't do shitty things. Okay. <laughs> no name. <laughs> I get all my nice peeps confused. <laughs> Have a good night and I hope you feel better. Sorted with your card. Hi, Bondi. You know, Chantal, you do realize you're putting yourself into a corner again. You realize that? One moment. I'm going to get some. Okay. What was I saying? What I was saying was, Chantal, you do realize you're putting yourself in a corner again, right? See, you got a new batch of Beezers in your room. All the older Beezers that were there during Crackhead Olympics, a lot of them are gone. So now it's just the new batch. The ones that are coming in late to the party, they don't know all the lore. They don't know all the history. They were not there when you were at your lowest and making lots of money doing it. They were not there. They weren't there to watch you talk about your supposed DV stories for hours on live stream and try to get sympathy and super chats from people. But you're talking all this stuff about Natter. He's so horrible, blah, 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 blah. So you're feeding them this line of crap. He was so abusive. He was so wrong, yada, yada. And you're putting yourself in a corner. Because if you get around Natter and you get caught, and you often get caught, and sometimes you want to get caught, you're so eager to lay claim to men that you purposely do something stupid to get yourself caught just to lay claim to what whoever that man is you're putting yourself in a corner you're saying this guy is abusive he's hurtful so if you're caught anywhere near him whether it's in thailand whether it's in canada whether it's in kuwait people are going to nail you to the wall it's going to be so obvious you're a fake phony victim you're talking all this mad trash. And by doing it, you're painting yourself into a corner. You want to be with Natter. That is the one you really, really want. So if there's ever going to be an opportunity where the two of you are going to be together physically in the same room, you can't do that as long as you've got this great big lie going of I'm a DV victim and he hurt me so much. Yeah, <laughs> Black Zillion, yeah. That's not very halal of you. No, it's not. <sighs> no Ebonics. <clears throat> Alice, I don't worry about that. Ebonics says, is Desert Prince Natter? Yes, it is. Because when he came in, she says, oh, hi, Nat. And then she stopped herself. It was Natter. Things like this. You know, let's just say I'm being used. We're not even moving to Canada, but let's just say someday we get tired of everything. We move to Canada. Sorry. <laughs> and he leaves me for whatever. Oh, well, I'll go to Cuba. I'll survive. No problem. There's a little bit of self-awareness in what she just said. What if I'm being used? Chantal, you know you're being used. But you know what? It's okay. I think you're okay with it because the using part goes both ways. It, it really does. Just as people like Salah and Natter, they might use you for money. And they get their bills paid and get their groceries paid for. At the same time, you're using them. So it's 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 a done deal. You know, like if they use you, you use them. You use the men that you come across for content. You want to put them on camera and do videos and do lives and do couples content. So it's not just like they're using you. You're using them back. 
this whole thing of you painting yourself a victim. I'm such a victim. No, no, no. You're a predator. You're a predator. You always have been. Even before YouTube, you were. You are a predator that wants to paint themselves a victim so that nobody notices what a predator you really are. Like she likes, like she likes to shut up, Chantal. She likes to say all the time, "Oh, Natter used me." Well, she used Natter, and I'm not taking up for Natter. He can go kick rocks, but it's true though. She used Natter. The back and forth that they had with each other. That's when she made the most money on YouTube. That's when she was pulling in the twenty, thirty thousand dollar a month paychecks was because of the drama that he was causing with her. The constant back and forth. She hasn't seen paychecks like that in a while. It was a crazy time. It was her. It was him. It was a whole lot of party favors in the middle. It was nuts. You never know what was going to happen. It was crazy. All the reactors were tired. <laughs> we were so tired. I would wake up in the morning and turn on my computer and she's already done two lives. And I'm like, doggone it, Chantal. <laughs> and literally be at my computer all day, all night, just trying to keep up with her. Ugh. <laughs> Rachel, yeah. So whatever money she paid to Natter, whatever money she paid for groceries, whatever money she paid for trips and, and a phone and an iPad and whatever else, she got that money back in pocket. She got it back. Whatever money she spent on Natter, she got it back. If she was spending like two or three grand a month on Natter, and she was making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. I mean, she was making that money all the way back. So she was using him too. <laughs> but you know, we love each other, so that's not hopefully going to ever happen. Betch went live. He was probably going like, "Do you want to watch on the screen?" <laughs> Remember, like the good old days. But he doesn't. Uh-oh. So people in chat are saying, we remember the good old days, the two of you going back and forth on each other. Full Moon says, oh, wait, are we stream arguing again? Villa Days Nostalgia. So people are already putting that stuff in her head like, hey, hey, maybe you should go back to Canada and start things up with Natter again. You know she wants to. It doesn't make me angry like that anymore. So they, they don't have, I don't get any emotional react. Um provocation at all so before yes now no make fun of them don't pick on teardrop i'll kick your ass bye i'd love to see you try you can't kick anybody's butt you can't even kick your own butt no name just like roman and the other losers who try to leech fame Ugh. Yeah, keep your tagine to yourself, buddy. <laughs> I need to use the bathroom. Let's watch like the good old days. Yeah, now that the staff is coming and unplugged the toilet, it's time for her to plug it up again. I had a dream that Salah, there was a knock at the door. We were, we moved into this new apartment and um, they, whoever moved out, didn't clean the bathroom. It was full of barf. And I was you, the irony of you, you're making up this story about somebody not cleaning up the vomit at the same time. Staff just came in to your room and it sounded like you plugged up the doggone toilet, which is foul, ma'am. Foul. Foul. For fear of barf, that's why. 
and someone knocked at the door. It was like a, a mean knock and it was Swordfish. And he, he was face to face with Salah and it got pretty ugly. So that's the dream that she has. She's, she's dreaming about both of the sugar babies that she's talking to, that she's giving money to fighting over her. What did I say? What I say, y'all, this is what she likes. She likes it when men fight over her. It makes her feel desired. It makes her feel like she's worth something. It gives her a charge to have men fighting and arguing over her. She loved it when Pete and Natter were going back and forth over her. She liked it when to make Natter jealous, she went over to Bibi's house, even though Bibi wanted nothing to do with her, just to get under Natter's skin. She went over to Nat to Bibi's place, acting like she was going to get some of her stuff because she had left her stuff over at Bibi's place for over a year. She went to Bibi's place just to get under Natter's skin because she wanted to see if he cared. By the way, Chantal, that's a really effed up way to. See see if a man cares trying to make them jealous making them angry just not a good idea went over to bb's place to make natter jealous trying to get both men i guess to fight over her or pit one guy against the other and now here we are in thailand so she's allegedly having dreams of natter and salah having a confrontation she wants them to fight over her but what exactly would they be fighting over, Chantal? Neither one of them loves you. They love your money. They don't love you, though. If there was a way for either one of them to get at your paycheck without you being in the way, they'd do it. They just have to, unfortunately, go through you. In order to get the milk out of the cow, they've got to pull up his stool, grab a bucket, and milk the cow. Not exactly the most pleasant experience, but they... Just what they got to do. That's their choice. But you think if they're arguing over you, that it's you, that they love you, they care about you. No, it's about them and their financial stability. They want all the money to themselves. They want all of your money to themselves. That's about all your work to them. If you ever became bed bound and you stopped working and you stopped making money, neither one of them would care. Neither one of them. You think they really care about you? Cut them both off and see what happens. Tell them you're broke. Tell them you can't give them any more money. Guaranteed they'll run from you. They will. Ain't nobody hanging out with you for free. I remember just like screaming like, no, 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 stop. Like worried for Salah. Like I, I, I'm saying, I think he could kick his at matters, Matt Turd's at. But this is that, this is so her fantasy to have both of the men in her life fighting over her again, as if she's worth fighting over. But I was just like, I didn't want any, like, I didn't want him to get hurt, like Salah to get hurt in the process of like fighting for some reason, I was like really scared. And then I woke up. <clears throat> and you know what, Chantal, I would just go on record as saying that I doubt that you have these dreams. I mean, you're so scatterbrained yet. You can wake up and remember all kinds of details about dreams. Really? You can remember that much detail about a dream. And this happens a lot. Okay. No, I never clean the barf out of the vent. How am I going to? Yeah, that's disgusting. Duck Puppet says, did you ever clean your barf out of the villa vent? For those that were not around, when Chantal was back in Canada, when she was still wrapped around Natter, there was one night that she was really really out of pocket she was drinking she was doing other things and I, I honestly thought she was having a heart attack 
like she was sitting in her chair. There was a live stream going and she looked like she had lost control of her body. Like she didn't even know where she was, but she did the projectile vomit and part of it got into the vent of her apartment and it never got cleaned out unless somebody else cleaned it out. She just left it like that. I go in there. I told them about it though. I think I did. You're so freaking gross. You should be ashamed of yourself. I want durian. No, uh, not true. Could he magically disappear? That would be a good trick. <laughs> He makes people watch three hours of his cooking, then so messed out, meffed out. Yeah, that's what you're spilling tea. Nobody can even understand what he says. <laughs> even Salah's Arabic, and he doesn't understand him. So stop addressing um, Salah in Arabic because he doesn't understand anything you say. Well, they're not wrong about that as far as Natter. They're not wrong. Uh, Natter will make a live stream or, or video or something acting like he's got some tea to spill. And he drags it out. If he's got something to say, he learned well from Chantal how to drag things out and make people wait just for extra Google AdSense money. He'll sit there and cook a meal first. And make people wait. And that really takes people off. They're there for the tea. And yet he's going to drag it out to where he's not giving the tea. And when he does give the tea, you can't understand what Natter is saying. He's talking so doggone fast. Like if you got something to say, just spill it. Don't make people wait. And bring your notes and bring your receipts. Because those are going to be useful. But he, that's why nobody watches him anymore. That and the fact that he's stupid. Like, he he shot himself in the foot. He passed out over 100 privacy complaints to different clip and reaction channels just based on thumbnails. And because of that, no one's going to touch him with a 10-foot pole. I don't care what he has on his channel now. Ain't nobody going to touch him. Like, he really shot himself in the foot doing that. Like getting all kinds of strike happy. So no one's going to review his stuff. They might do a verbal recap, but nobody wants a privacy complaint. Yeah, he hates if I even acknowledge him, Amber. Yeah. I'm literally just making fun of him. So. <clears throat> Teardrop. <laughs> We didn't have to pay a penalty. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Lady J Laddie J says 10 people watching. You know what's amazing to me? That every single guy that Chantal has brought into the foodie verse, they get practically handed a channel, y'all. They create a channel. Uh, uh, an entire audience gets handed to them. People know about who they are. When you are a content creator, one of the hardest things when making a channel is just letting people know you exist in the first freaking place. So in the case of Pete's, Roman L. Roman, Natter, Salah, all those men, because of Chantal, they got handed an audience of viewers Lots and lots of viewers. Like their channels blew up. They didn't really have to work hard to get those audience members. The sad and unfortunate thing is none of those men were remotely interesting. And because of that, after Foodie stopped talking about them, they couldn't just take the audience that they had and the monetization and just turn it into something. None of those men are interesting on their own. Natter was making good money when he and Chantal were going at it. Likewise, 
Foodie was making good money when her and Nat were going at it. Because they're not really going at it anymore. He has maybe 10, 20 people in his chat when he used to have a heck of a lot more. A lot. Like over a thousand people watching him. Same thing with her. So he had an entire channel created for him. Content that was filmed for him. Thumbnails that were made for him. Audience given to him. Monetized super quick. And it hasn't amounted to anything. Why? Because he has no talent. He has no personality. He's got nothing. That's why he's still talking about Chantal. Because he knows he sucks. And he can't do it on his own. Stop it, Lady J. We didn't pay a penalty. I left a lot of things in the villa, though. Of course you didn't pay a penalty. Your name wasn't on the lease. Pizza's name was on the lease, and I've heard that there were over $5,000 in damages left to the villa that he had to deal with, not you. A lot of things. New, brand new things. These people can keep them. And they didn't charge us a cleaning fee, so I was... What do you mean they're not charging us? There was no us. There was him, not you. You weren't on the lease. Your credit sucked. You had a bankruptcy. You had him put his name on the lease. Therefore, you were not charged a thing. You could do all the damage to the villa, and you did, and walk away, and you're not liable. He had to deal with the broken tile in the kitchen. He had to deal with the repaint and pulling up the carpet and possibly the pad underneath because the cats were peeing on the carpet. Had to deal with this, the, the, the plumbing and all that crap. All the damage that you did. Willing to pay. We were willing to pay. Go have these. It's the sulfur, really? Yeah. I sometimes miss the villa. It was. But I thought you met, did miss the Western world. You miss the villa. You want to know why you miss the villa? Because you could be your authentic self there. You could. So go back to the villa then. Cozy. I mean, Pete's, I'm not encouraging you to do this. I mean, Pete's is an idiot. He decided to put it out there that he's got all kinds of money right now. You could go home, talk him into living with him again, get things started, go wild. Start making that decent YouTube money again. You could do that. So why haven't you? I mean, he I'm sure he put that information on the Internet for a reason. He was whistling you back home saying, Chantal, I got money. I know you love money. Come home. I got enough money to get a place together. I'm sure that's why he was saying that. I left the coffee table. Which one? your job you can just block those people if they're harassing you she's like seriously nobody i've ever been with has pretended to love me and for the record teardrop i heard what you did because you talked about it in chantal's stream not too long ago the fact that you had unfixed cats around that you weren't getting fixed and you had a dog or two dogs and your dogs had one of your dogs had killed two of the kittens and you weren't doing your due diligence to keep your animals safe so you're horrible screw you you suck nobody not a single person you can tell even if they treat you like crap they can still love you but I mean, I treated my some of my exes like shit and cheated on them, and I still loved them. That's not love. That's not love. When you're sitting there, you're in a relationship, and you're cheating on somebody, that is not love. Oh, I, I cheated on him, but I still loved him. Apparently not in the right way. Your love sounds kind of selfish. 
that you expect that you can go out and be with other men and they're just supposed to take that, accept it. No, 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 nobody that's got any kind of integrity would. Well, it comes along, Christiana and Roman Black. Hello. Whatever you are asking is none of your business. Yeah. Ooh, did you let the kittens get eaten? Yeah, because that happened with uh, with Teardrop. <clears throat> she killed them, yeah. Yeah, it just happens. Like, it's, you know, the animal world is messed up. <laughs> so Teardrop says, my dog didn't eat the kittens. She unalived them, yes, but she didn't eat them. Still, though, I mean, what the heck were you thinking? Anyway, I could go on and on about that. I'll I'll shut up. Let's keep going. Seriously, it's not your fault, your drop. Didn't take you long to set up the building. All I'm gonna say is I want to have a talk with you in Minecraft, teardrop. Well, I'm not going back to a villa. You guys are getting uh like hopeful that I'm gonna go back to a villa. Oh, this air conditioner needs. You know, I have to wonder if her letting Natter in the room and talking about Natter, if she's just kind of like putting the feelers out. Like she's talking about him. She's putting the feelers out. Like what if I went back home to Canada? What if the two of us started going back and forth with each other? What would the response be? Would I make more money? Would it be successful? It's kind of like a testing ground for her. Everything here is cheap. Good night, Andre Marie. You no, know, Chantal, if I were you, I would be paying attention to the fact that you're not with Salah. You're in a different location. You're not showing as much, but still, you're away from Salah. And people are a bit more interested in your content than normal. Pay attention to that. I hate when she lays down. I, I really, really hate it. It gets on my nerves so much. Let's jump ahead. I'm receding hairline. And the other man was in the room next door. He kept stripping naked and running around. Oh, please let this man come in here and teabag me. <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> oh, they're talking about somebody else that came next. Does she get up? She does get up. Good. I real, I'm not into the whole ceiling thing. When she lays down and she puts her big old face in the camera, I, I can't. Hold on. It's the time of the season. You know, I watched this stream. And you know what, Chantal? You're being obvious. You're being really obvious, big mama. You sometimes purposely tell on yourself. And you rely on the fact that those of us that have been reacting to you for more than a minute, you leave out breadcrumbs to us. You knowing that we will find them, knowing that we'll notice them and we'll point them out. You know, I remember back in the day when you lived in Canada, when Natter told you, you can't talk about me. You can't let people know that I'm talking to you or I'm seeing you. You would find little sneaky ways to get around the gag order. Because you were, you wanted people to know that you were with Natter. So you would find ways around him telling you no. So you were letting us know without breaking your word to Natter. And one of the things you used to do to tell on yourself about the fact that you were talking to Natter or you were going to be seeing Natter or you were seeing Natter is you would sing songs. The songs were always very telling. 
And the songs that you sang in this particular live stream, they were very telling. You're singing some songs that were way before your time, like back in the 60s, girl. Uh, way before your time. Weren't you an 80s baby? <laughs> I was born in the 70s, the early 70s. You're over there singing like time of the season. You're talking a natter, bro. When the love over there singing old hippie love songs. Yeah, you're talking a natter. Mm -hmm. Girl, get a gimbal or something. Moving on. Right. So She's sitting at the fountain with the koi fish, puts her dirty, filthy hand in the koi fish pond. What is she outside for? Because Chantal doesn't like to be outside. I'll tell you why she's outside, because she was waiting for a delivery. She could have gone to the green shop, but she did not want to walk to the green shop. She wanted someone to deliver stuff to her. What she got delivered, I cannot say, but it was pretty obvious that she was having something delivered. So I probably... I so I probably shouldn't do that, you know? Oh, the orange chewy things? Yes, Pam, thank you. So we need the salted egg mochi. Okay, cheese wieners. What else? I don't know what it was. It was some kind of food item, so I probably would like it. I mean. Okay, shut up, Chantal. So you could see right here, like, there's, she's at the fountain, looking at the fish, looking at the fish. And then right here in the preview window, it goes dark. You want to know why? Because she hid the camera. Whatever delivery was going on, she didn't want people to see. And then after she got her little green delivery or whatever it was, she's going where? To get her munch she's on because she knows as soon as she gets through smoking she's going to have the munchies come on Chantal and mochi <laughs> and I'm going to stand on business. I still think that she's blown through her uh, budget for buying food in Thailand. I just, I'm getting that energy that she is going to Peter to pay Paul. You know what I mean? She's just, she is seeking out other means. And she's borrowing money from people to pay other people because she's blown through her budget. <laughs> no, you said, told everybody that you have the opposite problem. Was it true or are you just joking? No, I don't, I don't want to know. Vitamin C? Choco Muncho. Choco Muncho. You know, Chantal has a problem with food. And there are d different things that make the situation worse. And green products make the situation worse. With the amount of green that she does, it gives her tremendous amounts of munchies. And she never stops eating. This is the coolest thing ever. I thought I got two. Did they rip me off? I don't want to see her eat. Next. Shannon's a narc. Okay. She's still eating. Oh, 
you know, I have a screwdriver. There goes your <laughs> Hi, baby. Welcome to Very Important Users. Ready, set, ease. Hi, Taba. Sorry, Taba. What is D12? I don't know. Is that a wrapper? No, Yoda, I won't. This is my lunch. Hold on. I'm doing something inappropriate to the candy package. <laughs> what? You beat it. She's singing. I don't want to hear that either. Mm. What time is it? Two in the morning over there? So it's all we got like yeah, we got like two hours left on this react. Girl, you're starting to bore me. You better pick it up or I'm done with you right now. I'll just take a break. I don't know. I kinda wanna do a long live because I'm not sure if I will go if I will be live later. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Do a long live. What is this? <laughs> Six hours is not a long live. Yeah, I know. Stinky poo, I won't. 3 a.m., 2 a.m., 10 a.m. for you, babe. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, from, a react, from a reactor standpoint, I hate it when she does like really, really long lives like this. It's a nightmare trying to, to review it. Oh, there he is. Look who's finally in the chat after about four hours. Salah. Although the worder on the street is that's not really him. Somebody else has taken over that account. It's obvious that somebody else is typing for him because when he types versus somebody else, the wording isn't the same. But there he is, allegedly. It took him hours to get in the chat. And now that he's in the chat, Chantal is going to, you know, like she's not going to be any fun. Boo. Yeah, uh, JC, pretty much. Okay, I'll be right back in like 10 minutes, okay? So now that Salah has jumped in the chat, now she's like, oh, he's here. I got to put my makeup on. No, you don't. You don't have to put your makeup on. And it's stupid to do that if, you're, if your face is dirty. Why do you have to put your makeup on as soon as Salah walks in the room? I have a really good idea for some content, by the way. Do you want to hear what it is? Thank you, Viv. How about doing content when you're not eating? Challenge yourself for a week. See if you can do content that doesn't involve freaking food. I know you guys know a lot about me. You're tuning in to, to talk about me and see what's up with me. What if like one night a week or once in a while anyways, I had like, you know, a thing where I ask you guys stuff. Like, I'd really like to know, thank you. How many of you in the audience would love, would just like die. It's like your dream job to be a YouTuber. Or social media star influencer. Chantal, look, I don't know what's going on with you. If you like slipped yourself an edible or something, but you already got hamburger eyes, girl. Whatever that delivery was, you got hamburger eyes. You got some edibles, didn't you? Whatever. I bet she did. I bet she got some edibles. I'm really curious. Thanks, Purple Bed. Four and a half hours. Yay, a long bees. Yeah, the crazy the crazy thing is she's she she went on for six hours. And it wasn't like riveting, interesting content for six whole hours. 
there's a lot of boring parts here. You could have condensed this down to like half an hour, just the highlights and done away with the rest of it. Nope. So, yeah, nice spin. You know what I mean? What would you, would you guys want that? Seriously. So Chantal is over here. Her job as the channel owner and content creator, it's her responsibility to make a channel where people have fun and they're entertained. So essentially what she wants to do is be lazy and turn other people into her content and like, oh, I want to do a Q&A and basically make you guys into my content and monetize it and make money with it. Always looking for ways to make money where she does not really work. And people in the chat are saying, nope, never, not interested, no thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Doug Puppet says, I think I'm good on that. Gabrielle says, nope. Yoda says, never. Purple Bed Beezer says, nope. Uh, Christy says, nope. So the Beezers are saying, no, nope, I'm not interested. Like if somebody like tomorrow handed you a channel with 10,000 subscribers, would you keep it going? And it well, well, that's kind of what you did with Pete's, with Natter, with Salah with Roman, you gave them channels. You gave them an audience and they all sucked. None of them are doing well without you because they relied so heavily upon you to get those views. It was like monetized. I don't know. Are we going somewhere? We'll see you later. I don't know. And it's okay if I am. I think she does her live streams. I think she talks to Salah and Salah is still on her case about he wants her to stay live for at least two hours. So if she did a live that was six hours, that means she's done three times the amount a work than what was required. But I think she gets online and she talks and she makes the Google AdSense money uh, to make Salah happy. But then she puts on her makeup because after the lives are over, then she talks to Natter in private and she has a little sexy, sexy time with him. So that's what the makeup is all about. Because I remember back in the day, she would get all dolled up for Natter. You know, she started, she cared about her appearance a little bit then. She doesn't care about her appearance with Salah. It's about caring about her appearance with Natter. If they have a little sexy, sexy time on, on the phone, that's what it's for. The slate is awful. Like a chaffle. It rhymes, sorry. Why did I mute sparkles? So Poppy FIFA says, I couldn't be a YouTuber. I wouldn't be able to deal with trolls or haters. Yeah, like YouTube is full of them. You could be the nicest person in the world and offend nobody. And somebody somewhere is bound to hate you and give you an issue. And sometimes people will complain about the silliest, smallest details and things that really don't need to be complained about. I didn't think nitpicking. Absolute nitpicking. I mean, there's constructive criticism, which is great. But then there's just nitpicking. Absolute nitpicking. And some people love to nitpick. Happy FIFA, really? Yeah, a lot of people can't win and it's normal. Totally normal. Yes, babe. Hell to the no, but I like my job, can work from anywhere and keep my life private. Nice. 
So this fake Salah or real Salah, I can't even tell which anymore, says, I will do two hours solo walking live streams when I will be there. Of course you will. Of course. Of course you're just going to, of course you will, Salah. Of course you will. Yeah, you're going to show up in Thailand knowing what you have to deal with with Chantal. You've already gone through it once. So I'm sure you're rushing over to Thailand to deal with that again. You know, the moment you get to Thailand, you're going to be at her beck and call. You're going to be her gopher, going for her food, going for her supplies so that she can shack up in that room. Her having temper tantrums and demanding food at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm sure you're rushing to Thailand to get back to that. Okay. All right. You know, you being in Thailand, but not being able to have a moment of peace. Her stressing you out. Okay. Yeah, the people who have channels where they're completely anonymous, <laughs> they have it good, you know, but not really because I like people like knowing me and, and, and I get to like, give whatever message I want, even though sometimes that message is just a burlock sap fart. Um, okay. I like, you know what I figured out? I like to make people laugh. And that's without a doubt what happens, even if they laugh at my expense and at me directly, right? Like about my weight or whatever. Tell the truth, Chantal. It's not about making people laugh. You just like the fact that you can get on YouTube and act stupid and not work very hard and make money and not work a regular job. That's what it's all about. You have said that if you weren't making on money on YouTube, you wouldn't be doing YouTube. It's about the money, mama. It's always been about the money. I think I mean, you being on YouTube is your way of avoiding reality, avoiding truth and avoiding work. It's you avoiding adulting. At the end of the day, like, I know who I am. What does it matter? Like, let people laugh. Who cares? Part of the fun, right? I like attention. And that's her number one addiction right there, attention. A lot of people think it's food. Food and attention, they're neck and neck for first place. You can't give her enough attention. She's always going to want more. She wants to be the center of attention. And that's why she freaks all the way out if the reaction channels start covering other people. Because she wants our attention. Even if it's negative attention, it's still attention for her. She doesn't like the idea of being replaced or being shoved off to the side. So she's always gonna do something to get that attention back on her. If we start to deviate away and find other people to react to, she'll always try to pull us back to her. You just want attention. You don't want my fun. Baby, you just hate the thought of me with someone. Up oh, there we go. There she is singing again. She's telling on herself telling on herself this is something she hasn't done in a while she did the singing songs telling on herself thing with natter she's never done that with salah she only did it with natter and now clearly natter is back in the picture i make you smile hi simply ravishing ah. i know i suck but what do you do to why don't you sell pictures of your feet on camp? Ew! Ew. Why would somebody suggest that selling pictures of her feet? Ew. Bad idea. Ew. No, I'm not gonna sell my body parts. <laughs> I'm not gonna sell my body parts. I'll just destroy my health on YouTube. I'm going to get on YouTube and destroy 100% of my health doing self-harm content using food. 
That's okay though. If it's non sexual. What about my child tooth? I could do that. Ew, what? He got beat up bad one time. Not more than once. Pick a style and commit. I'm picking a style. Oh, hi, Stingy Poo. I see you. So people in the chat are starting to recognize that she's under the influence. Stinky Poo says, girl, can you even see us? You're not baked. You're burnt. <laughs> she is. She's burnt. Oh, my gosh. Miss Heloth raised her a three-gallon one. Right, left, right, left, we all fall down. Look. Don't sing that. That's Martika Toy Soldiers. And you're singing it wrong. Toy Soldiers. Oh, you're really telling on yourself. So not only are you putting on your makeup, you're putting on the body spray. Definite natter vibes here. Look. I'm not hungry, you know. Munchies, but I have the chips and stuff. Let them say hi to my face, not behind the screen like a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Energy. Carly Simon. Um, I don't sing Carly Simon. I think so. I'd have to refresh my memory. Oh, somebody's saying, do you like Carly Simon? I was, I was going to say, don't sing her songs. Where is she from? I like Simon and Garfunkel, sort of. <laughs> what? Leave them alone. <laughs> I'm <still> in, yeah. <laughs> okay, so sidebar, side note, something I'd like to recommend to everybody in my audience. So Simon and Garfunkel did a song like long ago called The Sounds of Silence. It's a well-known song. Love that song. There's another version of that song that I absolutely recommend because the person who sang it, he absolutely nailed it. Uh, the, the lead singer from Disturbed, he did a live version of that song and he absolutely nailed it to the point where uh, one of the people from Simon and Garfunkel uh, praised him on his version absolutely praised him for his version so go check that out like just look for look under you know like the sound of silence disturbed it it, it it'll blow your socks off and before you watch it though something you should know about that performance so david is it dreaming when he was singing that night he was so incredibly sick so incredibly sick he wasn't all the way healthy but you could not tell during his performance so he had a fever he was very very ill but he was highly professional and he kept it professional also something that people may not know about the singer from disturbed like he was is it a canter uh let me just for those who are wondering what is that a canter i hope i'm saying it right All right, so a cantor or a chanter is a person who leads people in singing or sometimes in prayer. Cantor as a profession generally refers to those leading a Jewish congregation, although it also applies to the lead singer or choir director in Christian context. In formal Jewish worship, a cantor is a person who... Um, Solo verses or passages to which the choir or congregation responds. 
So he, David Dreamin of Disturbed, uh, was a cantor, and he goes. Uh, a cantor goes through years of extensive religious education, similar to that of a rabbi, in order to become officially recognized as such. They often come from a long line of cantors in their family, born with a natural gift of singing with extensive vocal range. So, in order to be a, a cantor, uh, you have to have wonderful wonderful vocal abilities so david dreamman of disturbed he was a cantor so like it, you, and you can he's got a wonderful voice so again going back to chantal check out the sounds of silence by disturbed like the live version of that it just you, it, it'll give you goosebumps anyway back to her all the time girl If you take a piece of gum and shake it in a bag with a bunch of potato, potatoes, potatoes, oh my! Are you almost done? We're not. It'll be a six-hour bees. I like guys that were have like mechanics and stuff. Yeah, everyone has their preference, but. <laughs> you know, it's true. Natalie, you may eat some ramen slop tonight. Like it was a five-star dish. Looks like. Okay, you know what? She's high. She's st and she's boring. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm dipping out. So I did manage to turn like a six-hour stream into like two and a half hours. So I think that's not bad. So I'm gonna end it here. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.